Hello, welcome to lesson three. Uh, lesson three is, is really a continuation of lesson two, where we continue talking about uh, environmental prevention programming and how it occurs in the community. If you remember from lesson two, we talked about what's called the SPIF model. It's the st strategic prevention framework, and it's the type of problem solving and identification model that's currently being used to uh, develop prevention programming in, in communities and in public health. And uh, you might remember this model includes assessing the needs of the community, looking at the capacity or the uh, ability of the community to actually implement change. We uh, actually make some plans based on what we found out during the assessment. What types of actions do we need to take in the community to address our prevention problem? Then you actually implement the program and see what happens and uh, do some evaluation afterwards to figure out did it work or did it not work? And that's what this lesson talks about more in depth too is the evaluation process and the implementation process. I want to give you some examples of implementation in terms of public service announcements that I have created um, in, in past years using this model with federal funding and uh, allowing you to read um, about some of those projects. There's also handouts related to um, what evaluation is, what effective implementation is, and why that's important. What evaluation is, is basically um, asking ourselves did the actions that we implemented, did all those activities we, we took care of day in and day out, did it make a difference? And how do we know if it made a difference or not? That's, that's the really important points. So in, in this lesson, we're looking at, at several items um, in terms of um, this um, uh, program that allows us to assess need and uh, implement programming, um, see if it's making a difference, and so forth. Have some uh, public service announcements that were um, uh, created by Partnership for a Drug Free and Sea that uses the Mayberry or Barney Fife motif to share a non-threatening message to the community. We um, uh, have some a few videos that are from um, some community coalitions nationally that talk about what their coalition does and what prevention is and is not and why prevention can be effective. I've included two short public service announcements that relate back to the material in your textbook where we'll be reading this chapter. Your textbook talks about uh, what is a standard drink uh, that's a really big prevention topic these days. For many folks, especially kids, believe that all alcoholic drinks contain the same level of alcohol, irregardless of size. And this is a really powerful prevention message that just because of the size of the drink, you know, if you have a drink this, this large, it can have more alcohol in it than a drink this large. For many of our young people believe the drink that's this large has more alcohol than the mixed drink that may be this large. And, and size really has no indication of the level of alcohol inside the drink. And um, the amount of alcohol that we can tolerate based on age and gender is also different. So all drinkers are not created the same either. So there's two public service announcements that um, uh, talk about those topics. Um, also provided a, a sample poster I designed and a sample note card that describes this concept hopefully a little bit clearer than your book may describe it. Also included two short videos or long form videos that were also public service announcements we created. Uh, one was a 14 minute video that describes the process of someone uh, being pulled over and arrested for suspicion of driving under the influence and what the testing process is like and the booking process in terms of blowing and the intoxilizer machines and that type of thing. 
um, the individuals inside the video, the, the person being pulled over is an actor, um, not an actual person being pulled over, but, but someone we engaged to, to act out the part. But the law enforcement agents and the officers are, are real officers going through the normal procedure when the video was shot that they would go through with any other person that they pulled over for suspicion of DWI. And a second video is a long form documentary that's about 45 minutes that answers the question of within one county at least that I worked in, why the county had and, and currently has such a high percentage of individuals being charged with drink driving and who had passed away or died on the roads due to drink driving. Plus we also get into the conversation of overconsumption of alcohol, what overconsumption means. We, um, all these videos are really good examples of environmental prevention approaches where we take research, the needs of the community, we identified what the needs of the community was, then we took that and created an action plan. And the action plan was to create these videos. And we produced the videos over a period of three years and shared these with the community. Uh, the uh, uh, YouTube websites, we passed out about 5,000 DVDs. We still have a couple of thousand left that we still pass out in hopes of educating the community about um, the problem at hand. And that's the goal of environmental prevention, is to provide a high level of education to the maximum number of people we can about the chosen topic. We, um, we do have um, several other reading assignments that's in the handouts box of, of these pages, uh, plus items you can download throughout the assignment. Please read um, from your textbook. The pages are assigned 31 to 59. Plus, we have two discussion boards that we're responsible for. Hope everybody's doing well. And I'm trying to mix it up a little bit and keep things interested. And um, what we will find is the material from the textbook and the material that I'm providing you, supplemental, will begin to merge together into one big concept. The, the deeper we go into um, the semester. Take care.